Ragnarok or ransomware goes virtual. So Ganesh, I, I hear you have a story about some malware for us. Yeah, uh, that's true, Ken. This is about uh, Ragnarok, uh, which is not new. It's one of the many of the many of the ransomware we're hearing nowadays. It's been active, maybe most active since December of last time, but it came to prominent recently. I guess the last week of last month, they kind of uh, attacked one of the energy sectors in Portugal, and they kind of exploited a 10 terabytes worth of data. And they demanded about 1,580 bitcoins, which is roughly equivalent to 11 million US dollars. And that's how they got prominent recently. How, how does they they work? Basically, as we all know, any any ransomware typically uses RDP, Windows RDP, right? It looks for open RDP to gain access uh, to the get the access to the domain controller from the they try to basically propagate within the network using different techniques. Like in this case, uh, the Ragnar is most prominent to use Windows PowerShell, which is built in with any Windows operating system. And it also leverages Windows group policy objects for lateral movement. And what's uniqueness or maybe new tricks it added to its arsenal is that it is using up, uh, basically using up a full virtual machines to evade detections. What they try to use is, uh, Basically, they're leveraging a, a virtual, uh, I'm sorry, Oracle virtual box with Windows XP virtual machine. They have a specific versions they're targeting it. I know basically virtual box is uh, one of the one of the prominent um, VM VMs instances out there, and it is also one of the most prominently used. What they're doing is uh, basically they have a component of uh, installer and then a virtual image. Uh, first, they will install the installer, which is about 120 meg megabytes of a size with 280 megabytes of virtual image. And but in these two things, actually, it's kind of actually sending through a ransomware executable, which is very tiny, about 50 kilobytes of a size. How is this attack being done? Once it found a vulnerable target by means of RDP, as well as figuring out uh, which other systems are vulnerable within the system. It uses GPO, uh, Windows Group Policy Objects. It uses GPO to basically install uh, MS, MSIE executable, which is basically installing the Windows to make a silent installation of uh, some sort of packages. In this case, I think uh, the executable for the um, ransomware from a remote, remote web, uh, web server. What it does is basically this, uh, this executable will have the component needed for creating the virtual image and also staying under the radar. Uh, in this case, basically three scenarios it will come up with. Basically, a world Oracle virtual box with a hypervisor 3.04, which is, uh, uh, I guess it's more than a decade old. I think uh, it's been compiled sometime in 2009. Uh, I guess they're using it maybe with with the with the goal maybe to detect it may make it undetectable maybe people may see that you know it's not something to be to be given some sort of you know closer attention to it. Once it actually has, it has certain components. It has a Windows batch script, which basically does the, all the all the things necessary for installation of the necessary files, as well as uh, virtual image disk preparation, all those things will be done by this batch script. Once the batch script has been done, what it does is like any other ransomware, it tries to delete the, all the victim's volume shadow copies. For instance, uh, if it has uh, external disk, like maybe D, Z, whatever the external drives, it w once it encrypts, it kind of deletes it so that it can basically cause the victims to pay them, pay the ransomware to give back the money. How is that? And what is the importance of a virtual box? There seems to be the only the reason they, the key on virtual box, I believe, is they have a unique feature in, in the sense host operating system can share folders and drives within the network. Uh, I try to explain a little bit. For example, we all have different Windows op um, laptops or maybe Mac operating systems. What he does is 
with the, uh, with our cell, with our OSS, we also have external hard disk. For example, you may have external USB. We may have a, another uh, hard disk. What it does is, uh, with this virtual box, actually they can combine all these external as well as the physical external drives into one one bubble of a virtualized virtualized environment, and that can actually uh, accessible to the infected system itself. In this sense, what's happening is even if it's available to the ransomware, it's not seen by any any antivirus software, any maybe security solutions, which are basically physical to the system, right? So when the systems they try to scan for any of these artifacts, it's not seen to the these uh, most of these services. I think that's how it's trying to hide itself and evade uh, from the security softwares to make it uh, you know unavailable, maybe stay under the radar. I think uh, that, that's, the, that's the key factor which they actually tried to put into the latest iterations of this uh, Ragnar locker. Wow. And did you say that the, uh, the victims in this, in this case actually paid the money or did, were they able to restore from backups? Do you know? Um, no, I, I, I do not know whether they paid the money or not, but um, it came to prominent recently with which they used this technique to basically use the virtual box to get them isolate the data and close them to pay it. In the case, uh, um, I think it's uh, close to $11 million, but I do not know the details whether they paid it or not, uh, and there's corresponding information about that one. The target was using RDP, so uh, um, the vulnerable entity um, had RDP open via the internet so that these uh, attackers could, um, mm -hmm. yeah, so they were exposed. And it's very telling that they're still opening RDP via the internet. Uh, it, it's, uh, it's vulnerable, yeah, yeah. <laughs> to say the least, and people are still doing this. I, I, I yeah. I, I don't understand why um, <laughs> uh, in 2020 uh, they're not using like a VPN to get in and, and get into their sources and whatsoever. And so they're still keeping um, RDP open to manage their uh, platform or manage different things within their platform. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, so also with that being said, uh, did you mention something about uh, them taking over their DNS or domains? The use of RDP, I think uh, it has uh, pros and cons, right? Uh, we need RDP to certain things to access, but as you said, I think uh, we always say on threat track to have defense in layer, in the case that they have to restrict it. And also, for, for any ransomware, irrespective of the type or, or maybe what iterations they have, you need to have defense in layer as well as the verified good backups. Uh, the, the only way you can get back and running again is going back to and falling back to you know good verified backups to come back to bring up bring those um, systems up. Uh, but that, uh, but I think uh, with the recent work from home scenarios, I think uh, probably probably admins as well as corporations are um, a little bit forced to op or lack the security controls a little bit. I think that gives an opportunity to various bad actor to use ransomware to basically target them. So, so keyword, keyword administrators. So most most uh, administrators don't think about security. They're thinking about the comfort of them being able to get into uh, their network or in platform to do manage, you know, their. Um, mm -hmm. Servers and so forth. So they never think about security. They just want and I always preach uh, <laughs> that uh, comfort is not security. You, you can't uh, keep wanting the comfort of, you know, being able to get be exposed over the internet uh, just for the comfort of your being able to manage your network. You should think about security at the same time. Yeah, hopefully the, the stories, uh, the, uh, the things happening around maybe a little bit um, weight as to how, how it's important to secure the networks. And also in this specific example, in this Ragnet logger, I think uh, presence of any Oracle virtual box with Windows XP combination is a, given a good telltale. Also, 
for example, like, you know, any any time any alert related to manipulating shadow walls, wall copies of the windows, any any of those elevated privileges, there should be some sort of alerting. I think at least there should be an alert, you know, something is happening here, please take a look, something like that. It may not be any security incident, but it's uh, it's always good to get that alert and then make a decision based on your analysis. I think that would be the good best practice to deal with this kind of uh, malware. Did it say, Ganesh, if the, the antivirus uh, providers have been able to, to respond to this adaptation? Antivirus in the sense in this the security software, the challenge they have is uh, because once it's in the virtual box environment, it's not seen to the physical box, right? I mean, typically right. all these security software, they sit on the physical system rather than on the virtualized ones. I think uh, they, uh, the, there are different ways they could uh, detect. For example, as I mentioned, maybe uh, Oracle virtual box related uh, files, maybe some keys, maybe those could be some indicators as well as maybe modifications to uh, these Windows group policy objects, as well as uh, maybe some elevated privileges being used with the PowerShell. Those are all different things maybe the, they could be able to identify it, but um, there are not many. I have not seen many with confidence say, yeah, we could be able to identify this specific Ragnar locker. But there are like maybe eight to 10 steps which could uh, give the administrators to basically go and look through that list and maybe see and cross check whether this happened. Oh, okay, if it's not happened, okay, what about the next one? Maybe some sort of checklist. I think uh, the onus is also on the window, uh, I mean, window system administrators as well as the corporations, uh, instead of solely resp uh, relying on the security vendors to provide the detections, because there's always something new coming, right? I think it's good, good to have some sort of process and alerting to catch up or something which is unknown at some point of time. There's always be some unknown at any point of time.